minutes remaining. OG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds <laughs> passes. Turn to ban. That sounds unfamiliar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we haven't heard it until today. We just heard it earlier today between Team Secret and Vici Gaming, but now here we are. Game three. First pick OG, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yep. They... So do you think like EG is gonna... Like, we're gonna have to answer soon. Like, EG, if, is EG going to remove the draw here? Early. That is the biggest question right now. Yeah, all eyes. Oh, could you first pick the drought? <laughs> that is also another question. I don't think OG is interested in doing that. I feel like EG don't want to one two the drought into face ending pick. Mm. What, for example, a team like Liquid would do in that situation is if the enemy one twos drought, you can bet they will finish that phase with a brood pick, for example. Like there are a couple of counter picks that you can grab there that are absolutely devastating. Uh, Draws is so much more dangerous to pick in that position, so uh, OG don't need to first pick it to protect themselves against that one two, in my opinion. EG still needs to stick to the ban on the Chan and the they just profit. They just yeah. profit here. Yeah, I think so. Here, I think. I don't think they need to change anything on that. EG perhaps keeping it classic. Definitely looking pretty relaxed in the booth. Ursa ban coming out once again from OG. Same bans as they had in game one. I mean, we talk a lot about like being first pick, second pick. I, I want to know what you guys think about the sides or the difference in sides. Like, be, would you rather be on Raided now? Yes. Just because of the Roche? Yes. And what about Dyer? What, what do you think Dyer has to offer? Or you think Dyer has nothing? <laughs> uh, generally first pick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think the, the Dyer's triangle, uh, the, yeah, that's the, the ancient area is, is still better. Like the natural movement between the three camps with the ancients on the right hand side of the map is better. Uh, that's like the primary natural advantage that Dyer has right now, and we've mainly just seen teams prioritize Radiant, so they they deem the Roshan to be more important. One of my ex teammate used to say that the Dyer jungle, like jungling on the top side of the Dyer jungle, is much more safer compared to the Radiant. Because you're on the high ground. Yeah, you're all yeah, on the high ground. That is true. That is true as well. But in this patch, the jungle is just not very appealing in general. So that oh, that's the jungle? <laughs> oh! <laughs> so the advantage is just not as... Hey, wait, what? Oh, this last band will morph. Fling. The IO, Gyro, because everything is in the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything's yeah, out so now. IO, Gyro, Drow, EG, Enchantress, Enchantress. OG, you guys don't play IO at all, and then... OG uh, in the past picked something and when uh, opponent picked Ayu and Gyro, they responded with the Morphling, so I think that's what yep. they're before. Absolutely, the plan here. Right. So OG need to pick between, do we want to play the Ayu that we played once and lost? <laughs> or do we get the Enchantress and... Okay. Well, they, will, they take the Ayu. They will grab it. Alright, they'll take the Gambit from EG. Will they want to the draw? No. They're denying the Gyro. I mean, Fly being a support partner with Jarex, we'll probably know if Jarex does play IO or not. And yeah. then my guess would be like no. So I think Jarex's IO is pretty good. He plays IO. I think it's pretty Yeah, he plays IO. Yeah. I mean, obviously, his one is No Tails, absolutely trademark heroes from back in the day. He was the best IO for a long time years ago. So he could pick it up if they need him to, but I just don't think that's the dynamic they have in their team right now. But. You know, you, sometimes you got to dig deep in these third games in these series when the teams figure each other out so much. Let's see what they find. Oh, Spectre oh, coming okay. out. That is... I don't really like this. I think You just picked Spectre into an Enchantress. That is a horrible lane matchup. And I don't think uh, Spectre is particularly good with Io or against the Gyro. This, oh, this what looks if, what if you don't lane the, against the Enchantress? Maybe you lane the Spectre elsewhere. You try to lane him elsewhere. Oh, do, I feel like you can't put Spectre mid, even as a dual lane. I think it just doesn't work. So now you're giving EG a full banning phase and picking phase to just pick another side lane that Spectre doesn't want to face. Mm -hmm. Obviously the worst one is out, that's the Ursa, that Spectre absolutely hates facing, but there are other heroes that you can definitely find, such as uh, Necrophos, Necro. I think, also destroys Spectre completely in lane. 
Well, at least they ban out the Undying. Undying is uh, very yes. good against Dying. That's good for sure. Good in the lane, and you when when you come to team fights, the Tombstone, the zombies actually stop the Desolate from doing damage. Yeah. I feel like OG has a different approach against the Enchantress. I, from the games that I've seen them playing against Enchantress, it's like. Spectre just lays against Enchantress until Enchantress is level 6 and he just dodges that lane. When would you go? Yo. Well, like, I'm talking about later in the game, like, uh, when Enchantress is level 6 and then yeah. Uji sends, like, some, like, a uh, lane defending hero and then just, just kind of deal with it. That's the pattern that I've seen it and then... Do, do you think that's gonna work? But what support do you pick to actually salvage the problem? I mean, that's for me, that's one thing. But the other thing is what classically happens with a hero like Ursa is you start losing the lane to Ench, you're like, okay, I can't lane anymore, I go jungle, which is not great, but it's something. Spectre can't jungle, so Spectre will have to leave Enchantress's lane and go to the off lane. But what if it's counterpicked there? Mm. That's just, it, it feels like, I don't know, I, th I think OG either has what Marsh was talking about, like some crazy pocket strategy here that we weren't thinking about, or... Or they might just be overthinking things a bit here. Like, just from a simple point of view, this does not look like a good pick to me. Yep, I, I understand where you're coming from. And uh, on top of things, uh, but do you think like if they use three heroes, let's say they use three heroes to secure the Spectre's lane, yeah. do, do you feel that that would be worth it? What if they did that? Do, I think they can lose a three versus two lane when Io is one of the supports. I think this lane is just... Really? Is there no pick? Like, it's just super weak. Like, and, and nothing can salvage it. I, you could put something like a Bane there, I suppose. But what price are you going to pay? That's the question. Well, like it's this Phoenix again. This time there's no silencer. So you guys need to, you need to find the partner with Ayo in the off lane, oh, right? It's bad. Never mind. <laughs> it won't be there. <laughs> yeah, silencer will be And yeah, as we were talking about OG, uh, I mean, we're we're scratching our heads a little bit here on the panel and seems trying to figure out how the rest of this pairs up with the IO inspector. What did you say, Mark? I, I'm, I was talking about like you still need to find a partner for the Wisp, right? The IO. Yeah, you and do. Then, like, you do, do. Do you like Bristleback? I was gonna say Bristleback because uh, Bristleback is kind of okay against Enchantress. That's uh, like, it's all right. Enchantress, the like, you Bristleback naturally just runs in to Enchantress uh -huh. and then Enchantress doesn't do any. That damage to them, then and then I used to be an enchantress spammer too, and then I faced a lot of uh, <laughs> Bristleback to counter me in the lane. So trying to scratch my head. Possible because the uh, the Bristleback would mean that they they might uh, the enemy might have to use resources to deal with the BB because you don't want a BB to run away your lane. Let's say you have a Wisp BB or IO BB on the, on the safe lane, so that could also be a potentially good reason to pick the BB here. So you take the attention away from the Spectre's lane, so Spectre can can at least get some farm. Not not win the lane, but at least have, have some some XP, some farm, so you can actually play the game. You know what here is still in the pool? What are we thinking, Sin? Drow is still in. It's pretty G. <laughs> you are correct. We talked so much about Drow. Let's and expect, then we... expect us to Drow. There's right the pain. So this might be the, their attempt at uh, contesting their own safe lane against this Enchantress. So do you think this is enough? These three heroes. I'll expect the bait. That is definitely strong in the beginning, but again, the question is just how much you're going to pay. And you still, you secure your Spectre, but I feel like you don't bully Enchantress out of the game. If you put a decently strong support with Enchantress down here, she is competitive against the IO Bane running at her. And you can try to pressure them back. And of course, you also have the option of sending your own third hero down there. And then the lane is still pretty weak, actually. Alright. I still think the ben. Uji picked... Well, they pick Spectre to kind of counter the Bro Ranger, and then but their, the their logic against Enchantress is like their, their theory. I'm not saying it's right, but I think what they're thinking is they're just trying to ignore the Enchantress as much as possible, is what, they, what yeah, I think. Because there's this one thing about Spectre, like when you're playing Spectre, you don't really need your lane to go that well. You want your teammate to have a good lane so that when they have a good lane, you level 6, you haunt, you you, you haunt to the lane, you kill steal some. <laughs> but you're not levels. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, if, if I'm Spectre or I'm Draw, I, I don't really care that I have a good lane. I care more about my team having a good lane. <laughs> That's what I feel on those heroes. So, well, you're right, at least they saved the ban, because it seems like EG were not interested in grabbing the Drow because of the Spectre, so at least that's a benefit. I know I'm being very, very negative about the Spectre, but I just feel really, feel really convinced oh, about the Spectre. Game. Okay, this is all very... Right. So all they need is a banner on last. AA. So that's one of the top sons uh, here he was successful with, against yep. uh, BGJ. But he, they picked Zeus 
into like you not knowing your like you could get crushed. But I guess they've got one ban. They can ban the TA. Yeah. That is the worst matchup for Zeus. Zeus into blind matchup is generally pretty dangerous. I think TA could be a big problem. Uh, the question is, would EG be confident enough to pull out a last pick? I was Brood. really checking out the Brood Mother. Because mm. Brood can looks play? insanely. Yeah, so Mayo they... plays Brood. Oh, he plays Brood? I'm pretty sure he does. I have seen him play once. Like, uh, okay, in the Summit? Yeah, I think he played a pretty good Brood, actually. Misery and... was like, he doesn't pick Brood, and then they pick Brood. Oh, yeah, right. That was him, right? Yeah. Wasn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right now, and you got probably going to ban TA. you got to pick your poison here. Because yeah. Zeus has, I think, those two are the absolute worst matchups. And I think both of them are, like, really, really bad. All right, well, only one ban. ban left. We'll see which one they choose on the side of OG. Another thing here that EG could do is they could still grab the Drow because Drow does pretty well in lane against Zeus, actually, in that mid lane. We saw a VGJ Storm I mean, take advantage of that. Who doesn't do well against Zeus? He just <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a fair point. Zeus is my favorite hero, too. He does pretty well in the, a lot of, against a lot of the melee heroes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of melee heroes do poorly, especially if they don't have good regen and have to invest all their gold into Sal's. So TA or Broodmother here? I, which hero do you want Thompson to lose to? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, I, I, those, ma I, I, those I would, matchups are I, I really bad. I would rather Sunil play Brood, to be honest. Just to see it? Storm. <laughs> to see it here. Yeah. Storm, yeah. oh, Storm, Storm is also Storm would have also been a great pick, there you so go. don't blame them for it. There's yeah. a lot of bases to cover here. I think compared to the last two drafts, this feels more like EG are dictating it to me. I think they are more ahead in this one, whereas in the last two OG were the ones throwing the curveballs with that Arc Warden pick. The whole first draft was great with all of their team fight and the Nature's Prophet yeah, over Yeah, but OG had first pick. What, what, in both games? I mean, in oh, this, this one, yeah. True. Okay. okay. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah Centaur. <laughs> Centaur is pretty good against uh, Broodmother in the laning phase. You sound like you lost your last yeah. bit of faith. <laughs> yeah. Winter. Winter just gave up all hope on this draft, I mean. <laughs> Didn't they lose like all their games with Sento? Uh, perhaps, I, you know, uh, but as you guys are saying, I mean, I think when you said that EG seems to be dictating, it almost seems like well, the OG we saw in games one and two, they're forced into a composition where they can't be that, right? They can't be the same OG they were in games one and two, high progressive early on. TA looks so hot this game. <laughs> what an awesome pick that would be. Oh. But with the Sento, I don't think they're gonna dedicate three people to one lane because you can't leave the Sento. I think they're gonna have this Bane and Sento go uh, go together to the off lane. For OG. To, yeah, to try and at least, you know. You think IO Sento, right? Uh, IO. Mm. Do you wanna play IO with Spectre? That lane just sounds really, yeah. really weak. <laughs> but uh, but, <laughs> but if, maybe you can sustain but if I'm the Spectre. If I'm way. the Sento, I get to choose, I would want the Bane. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what I think OG will do in the laning phase is like the Bane, uh, Spectre will just start in the lane. like. And then the silencer from the last game where no trip played it, he just moves around the gate mm -hmm. that, right? So as soon as Bane feels like he can't do anything in the lane, he's just gonna move around yeah. to do something else in the mat while Spectre suffers at the bottom and then try to chaos in his level six. Do you think um, what EG might be considering here is if they want to put the gyro mid, but I think they will only do that when they have the drow. I have a feeling that this will be an Arteezy safe lane gyro. And Centaur is not that bad of a matchup for gyro and lane. Um, historically, it's been one of the better heroes by having that massive damage output. Ah. Okay, that was not a hero I was expecting at all, actually, out of EG. Totally but tiny it will coming be out. an aggressive lane dominator from Samail. All yeah. right. Well, Tiny comes out, was banned the last two games. This is game three between these two teams. And to bring us a little bit extra perspective, we have BSJ to break down the draft. The way you deal with Spectre lineups is by grouping up high tempo lineup and I feel like EG set up to snowball the lanes, increase the pace of this game and make it so that OG may not be able to come online quick enough. But if they're able to stop them, hold off that timing that all these three aggressive mid uh, semi carries that EG has, that timing that they're going to hit, I'm going to have to give it to OG. But I don't think they're going to be able to do that. But after watching that last game, what do I know? We're all here. It's 11 <laughs> p.m. It's late. There's memes. There's drama. If you're half as excited as I am to be here, give it up for my boys OD, Pixel, and Fog. <laughs>
the BSJ is indeed. We're getting ourselves into a very exciting match now. Game oh, yeah. three between Evil Geniuses and OG. We've just seen the two drafts sort of feels as a whole. The panel liking a bit more what EG is doing this time round. OG going in with sort of this second pick Spectre, ending the draft with a Sensor, another hero that's sort of one of those heroes that we've sort of seen very mixed results with sure sort of favoring on sort of the, the negative side of things. Seb's going to be picking it up as that fifth pick. What do we reckon, Vogt? What, what sort of OG's prospects are coming into this one with this early Spectre pick? OG's just looking to take this to the late game. EG's all about that constant aggression that they're going to be putting out. That's why they put Sumail on a killing hero. You know, the, the panel was mentioning the Templar Assassin, which would be great, but it's it's passive, right? You're not looking for kills, and no, we know Sumail. He wants to be trying to get kills. Tiny yes. versus Zeus, that's Zeus also a pretty perfect. good matchup. You have a lot of base damage on this Tiny. The Zeus is pretty short range as well. So like they are saying, the Zeus, you can do great versus most melee heroes, but Tiny, you thrive because you can't actually get pushed out with all your magic stick charges constantly. So yeah, EG, they're looking to keep the tempo up, make those aggressive moves, while OG, they're looking to just stall this game out as long as possible so that the Zeus and the Spectre can dish out all that damage. Let's see how it goes down and how OG do lane this, sort of as the panel was talking about, how they want to match up the Sensor. Probably, you imagine, what, with the Io? With the Io, And yeah, have yeah. the Bane babysitting the Spectre? I think the Bane, yeah, Bane yeah. should start top and then make moves around adjusting, depending on how poorly the lane goes, because you're still like a Bane Spectre, it's not the strongest, as they make an aggressive move forward. Do you have the Nightmare to set up, bringing Seb in, can they get the body block self onto Crit? Crit running himself away from Seb, Seb finds the Hoof Stomp though, and that'll be first blood for Seb. They get anything more out of this at the moment, just harassing down Samel. Samel keeping his distance. Nicely done. Four, four man rotation. Blood. Set up for taking those bottom two rooms, but at the same time, s falls up top. Prodding and poking at Anna, keeping him away from that top bouncy room. So with that Nightmare level 1, it does set up for the kill, but it does hurt you a bit in the lat laning phase. Because you're not able to trade right clicks and go for those brain steps as consistently versus two ranged heroes. But he will have to go toward that top lane. He has to- he can't just fully sack Ana. Yoke. Bye. Let's see how well Ana can do on this top lane. And so the panel worried about that could be the pressure that sort of sets Spectre back too far to, to really be able to turn up to those fights, hit that sort of level 6 at the timing that Anna wants to. The double level though. New Spectre. Old classic. Topson gets a very good block in the mid lane. Under his tower, should go to farm that just fine. Sumail acquired 5 stick charges just from that level 1 fight too. More sustain coming up for this tiny. Bottom lane as well, it's easy. Able to farm underneath the tower, got a good block off too. Missed the creep though. Flip comes out. This bottom lane, Seb should be able to get a decent amount of space from it. With the IO backing him up, they don't have the biggest kill threat with the Venge and the Gyrocopter. With the IO there as well. They can't look for the IO. Though, once they get some more levels. Fly. Getting chased down here into the trees. Anna and he's no tail. Fight him, he gets run down and taken down. OG get themselves a second kill here. On that top lane this time round. And extra money for Anna on the Spectre mid lane, Samael. Keep Topson off these creeps, make sure that Samael can get those last hits under it, underneath his own tower. But they can't afford to feed kills away to Anna. Anna, so he, he's going to be lapping that up. They prioritize just to heavily commit for the kill rather than go for any last hits. You see Anna only had two at that point. So they just fully went forward with the Nightmare and go for the harassment on the fly because they saw the Fire Spirits committed as mid. Topson. Samael. Samael got the toss. That's a kill. 1v1. Samael takes the kill. That level Straight three. up outplay. We see it so often though, right? Even when we see the tiny supports, any position where the tiny is played, as soon as you're level three, you have to be very careful because the threat of the kill comes out with that triple combo. And CSY is the middle lane as well, somehow doing a great job uh, keeping that lead. Yeah, he's got a huge, I mean, not, not, not a huge base damage advantage. Because Zeus has some crazy stats now with that amplification and the buffs that he's gotten for his base damage, but he'll get more denies on the tiny. That's out. It's a hold back fly there. Fly gets the fire spirits out. And she's in there, S4 sort of taking the nightmare off momentarily so that he can get the further fire spirit out as well. That's no tell. Right clicking down Fly, Fly getting brain sapped, Anna trying to go in. S4 and Fly both sit pretty low but the nature's attendance is out. S4 and Fly will be fine, mid lane, Samael actually this time getting burst pretty low here. He's managed to get himself the invis room, fills back up the bottom. 
Should be able to regen himself back up to a point where he's able to go back in and face Thompson again in that mid lane matchup. Bottom lane crit. A lot of damage here from the spirits of Jarax. Thompson used everything there to try to go for that kill onto Sumail. Actually completely out of mana as well as health as to bring it the salve and the clarity. It's top CS for Anna, 12 for 3. Doing pretty well against the pressure of flying S4. Pretty good. Really slowing down his farm too much. Yeah. Sumail again in this mid lane getting low, but he knows Topson's manners. Pretty much done for as well. Two lanes going great for OG right now. Seven, Jarex able to do a lot down bottom to pressure the gyrocopter. And Jarex even getting a side pull now too. So denying RTZ a full wave here can Top be very Anna. significant. Be fine here, but being heavily harassed mid lane. Mid lane to toss. Oh, he's got it. Sumail again. These straight-up outplays in the 1v1, Samel's done it twice now in the first three minutes of gameplay. And you know that that's the exact reason we were talking about. That's why he wants to play a hero like Tiny. He doesn't have to play the lane passive. He's brought heavy amounts of regen to make sure that he stays topped off. Topson, no boots. Sumel has boots coming out on the courier. Topson is in un under so much threat now. Top about I me. Mean, Fly can land those spirits. Doesn't look Close. like he's going to try for it. Does still have some left. Banana has the sails out, he's popping one and he's still got one ready in his inventory. He needs to go for it again, spirits won't clip him, so Anna's able to get himself back up to full HP. The race to the bottom rune, Sumail will be able to claim that one, fill up his bottle. In this mid lane, Thompson really has to be careful. This matchup just so hard it's now that Sumail's got this edge with those two kills. Yeah, he's got boots, so yeah. he can just run at Thompson constantly. It's Thompson, best he can do is just try and find the CS those arc linings and he is doing so 23 to 6 19 for two Samael having the lead he experiences such a goal with those kills but farm wise Topson's still able to able to find a decent amount of Zeus in the middle lane yeah still doing quite nice Arteezy is getting really shut down bottom only 11 last hits on him you see the Spectre's doing actually considerably amount oh, this of better, rotation actually rotation. for Topson that's gonna catch Arteezy potentially off guard he does pop the the fairy fire as he backs away Most speed. Looking for the Hoost on, and all down. Seb doesn't actually go for it there. Ooh, they had just... to set up with the Lightning Pole, but Seb actually cancel casted the Hoost on. Could have just gone for the double edge as well. He was actually in range for it with the tether. Tether movement speed. Wanted to get the stun because they didn't have enough damage, but with the Lightning Bolt and the double edge, they would have had the kill. Slight mistake there. And Sumail. Going to claim a bounty. Does get scouted. And she goes for the uh, combo here because he's got Arteezy coming in with the wraparound as well. Looking towards Thompson. The Rocket Barrage chased down. Attempts it, but Seb with the Hoost on will hold back Sumail and Arteezy. Putting an enormous amount of pressure onto this gyrocopter. Go for the shrine, EG. And top lane, Anna really is He's doing very great. well for himself on yeah. top. This this lane of of the S4 Enchantress and Fly Phoenix just doesn't seem to be as doing as, as much as you'd expect it to against this Spectre. Now able to get so much secured yeah. farm, also get that one kill. Of course, once Enchantress hits six, we're gonna see that completely change because then the Spectre actually can't even lane up here. That's Topson. Playing around with Sumail a bit, they really are just focusing on that rune control so heavily. Fly? Dives himself away, this top lane. Fly and S4 just seeming to have very, very little impact on Anna's farm. And if anything, they're the ones getting bullied out of that top lane each and every time. S4 still getting the farm though. They can't actually threaten the kills onto the Enchantress at all with that lane. But they can threaten the kills onto that Phoenix over and over again. And Sumail makes a rotation down bottom, but... Scan seemed to come out and actually caught him on the side of it. But it really is, as you say, out of all the lanes, out of all the cores, Arteezy is the one to struggle the most. Mm -hmm. See if they can find some action from him. Samel tries to go with the avalanche onto Jarek. Jarek pops the stick charges, keeps the distance. He's got a big old sensor between him and, and EG, so they can't dive in for Jarek's. Cute little play coming up from OG is uh, Seb bought and bring a health, but he actually hasn't had it on his hero. He's been giving it to Jarex this whole time during the lane, so that extra burst, uh, extra amount of regen. There's something to point out that not many players actually get to lose. That's like a, this is like an old Dota 1 thing people used to do. It's like, alright, I'll take my ring of health for a little bit. And definitely a mechanic that not a lot of people use nowadays. It is still there in the game. Mm -hmm. of certain items. Let's fly. Now just starts to make moves around the map. Wants to get some wards out too to be able to watch the aggressiveness that comes out toward that bottom lane. Toward Arteezy who's level 4 in comparison to 5 center and almost level 5 IO. 
I mean, how do sort of EG as a team sort of sort out this bottom lane? Or do they sort of, they sort of at the moment just accept that they've got to sack RTZ? Yeah, I mean, you have to accept that that happens. You can't win all three lanes in Dota. If you're expecting that, then it doesn't tend to happen very often. They're doing great. they're doing well in their other two. S4 is still getting a lot of farm. As we can see, the S4 and some out of the top two net worth for the moment in the game. Looks out, looking for a bit of a setup on to fly. They'll put the Thundercross wrap for this one as well as the Haunt. Ready with the chase down after the Icarus dive was used to find fly. Even looking to move straight again down onto the bottom towards Crit and Arteezy, but they get themselves back by the Tier 2 tower. Ana ideally wants that kill though, with the first Haunt usage, such a long cooldown. No tell ends up taking the kill from him. Thompson, Samuel. he's coming across. Samel pretty tanky at the moment with a good amount of levels he's got. Turns towards No Tail and No Tail. The fairy fighters, but the brain sap keeps himself alive. Fly being chased, he's gonna get zapped down by Thompson. Quick Thunderbolt for the low ground, secures themselves another kill, OG. They're still looking to play very aggressive on the side of OG, even though they have a Spectre lineup. And we see, of course, as soon as the Enchantress hits level 6, that's why Ana wanted to use the Haunt so we can get the hell out of that top lane. lane. Nice little toss set up there from Samel to get crit in range to hold down Thompson with a magic missile. Top two networks. We do have EG, but there is a Spectre staying pretty close behind that. Only, only 200 behind the inch. But S4 will be able to take out this tower much faster than OG can actually set up the push in. Top tower has fallen. Nine minutes in. Being able to clear up that tier one tower will allow sort of EG to invade this top half of the map that little bit easier. And they're going to go for it straight away with the smoke. Arteezy's still oh, no tail, four. very low. This will help Arteezy oh. if he gets, uh, gets eyes on it. But no tail's on the high ground. They don't see him for now. They do now with that wall place down. But No Tail already on his way back home, so EG unable to sort of make the most of No Tail being out that low as they didn't quite get vision of him in time. They might have to actually give the tome to Arteezy at this rate. Level 4 still, level 7 on Ana. Just unable to find experience on the map after that pressure from the laning phase. Spot him. Ana again. Look at the Wolves fly. Fly has to dive. And then Jared's trying to close in on him. And then, well, they don't even need to. Thompson's there with the ult back online. Pops the Thunder God's Wrath and gets themselves Another kill on to fly. Yep, OG still looking to continue making these aggressive moves. They've even got the relocate now online for Jerex. As for Ichi, they're going to be pretty reliant on Sumel with this Blink Dagger to make lots of moves around the map so that Arteezy can absorb that space and get some farm going. S4 can also play very aggressive with Sumel. As we see that haste popped, and they want to look to set up for Topson. Samel more than ready to dive behind the staff for this one. Charges straight in with the avalanche. Toss to follow. They'll pop the stampede. Can they get Thompson out of here? They cannot. Samel's in behind the tower with the haste room. Gets himself another kill onto Thompson. Bottom lane fly. Getting chased once again down on this bottom. That's going to be Fly's fifth death on the Phoenix. 0 5 and 0. He is struggling. He, yeah. They are just keep running at him every time he shows on the map. More and more farm, still sticking pretty close to that Enchantress, and they've even got a lot of pressure on bottom tower. It's mid. Swap, Swap. set up from Crit. Samael's there with the toss, and another kill for the time. Samael is looking very scary. 11 minutes in, blink dagger complete. He can keep going for these plays. A lot of OG's lineup at the moment, pretty easy to burst. Yep, pretty squishy overall across all of them, except for that Centaur, really. As RTZ now does go back bottom. Still level 5, but needs a lane. Can't just go farming jungle, can't really set up for kills around the map either because I mean, he's a 770 HP hero versus a Zeus. If he gets caught by caught in a bad situation versus Thompson, he can get burst down so quickly. Samael, there he is with the blink, jumps in. The one shot. Oh boy, Samael. What's that now? That's his, what, 5 0 five, one. Zero, one, yep. All six kills involved. And, and top four. S4. He just picks up Thompson on his own. Dragon Lance. All right, it's, it's starting to get messy here for OG. We're at 12 minutes coming up. It's a 3k lead now for EG. Flying crit on the hunt. Off the back of this smoke. Can they find the vision for Samel to get him with the jump straight? And he finds Jarek to stamp. He's going to be popped with the tree tosses there. Samel gets himself yet another kill. They're looking for no tail too. Crit. Gets the vision. All oh, the way the terror's out. No tail. Cannot escape. EG starting to really play fast now. Well, most of EG. We have four of EG players playing fast. Well, is just like, Arteezy's please playing guys, thank you so much. All the space is there for him now. He's going to be able to recover. Yep. And yeah, a lot of it's down to, to some of that. That fifth pick, Tiny, so far looking very good for Evil Geniuses. 
Now he's able to make so many of these aggressive plays. So many of these heroes still in that one-shot territory for him. Level 11, approaching that level 12 for that level 2 grow. It's absolutely massive. He's going to see Seb, that's the one hero he can't really do much about, so he'll let him be. Blinks himself out to safety. And that Echo Saber really going to come in. Incredible time for this Tiny. And time that OG, yep. as we say, are, are really going to look to try and just stretch out as much as they can. I mean, four other, four other heroes are already in that one-shot range. The Echo Saber is just going to put him that little bit over to always make sure that he can get those solo kills. Yeah, so the, the, the point where an infused raindrop isn't going to save you anymore. Yeah. Getting this wraparound ready, getting it deep more down. Which he may spot tops. Chris looking for the swap setup. Can't quite have division at the moment. Toss it is come out. Toss back, it seems. There's the jump. Smell going in with the combo. Jarrett is going to come in with the tether, but he can't do anything to save it. Fly pops the supernova to make that something. Fiend's group. They get RTZ. The dagger will get it. So they get the trade kill there. One for one, losing a core for a core. No tail prioritizing during that time period. Just putting down all this deep vision. We see three wards, or no, two wards actually placed at this moment in time from Notel to look for this gyrocopter who they know he's playing in that bottom side of the map as PSJ would say, you know, of course, the dead lane. So that's where he is going to get picked off while his team is making those aggressive moves. They're, they're giving a lot of space to EG of Films that feels that top lane, S4, taking a tier 2 tower, 14 minutes in. Yeah. He's got 2k gold towards his Aghanim, so top of the phase and the Dragon Lance. He's going to sit comfortably at the top of the net worth for Samael for quite some time, as it seems. Kind of interesting. Not going to go for the hood, even though he's versus like that Zeus and that burst damage that can come out from Io as well as Centaur. I guess he just doesn't feel the pressure at the moment. Yeah, he's really not. They have so many wards focused on that top side as well that we'll just see if any movements do come in. That's four. Looking towards Thompson here. Uh oh, Thompson. Thompson. Slowed down, the impetus coming in. He does get tethered up. Jarex takes him to the side. The stampede as well from Seb. They'll be able to get themselves apart, but Samael in straight away. No finds mercy. and finishes off the kill. Samael. And he's not quite done yet. He's ready to run back in with the haste. They've got vision on Jerex. Jerex gets popped as well. Samel, you can tell he's not done. He's seeing if he can find more. Seb tries to go with a who stop. Magic is up from Crit. Will stop the sun. Samel jumps in. Avalon toss. Free throw. He gets at it. Can he get Seb as well? They've got the impetus from Zest4 coming on to Seb. Seb trying to hide in the trees, but Samel and S4, they're hunting. They're finding Samel with the triple kill. Samel's tiny. 10 0 and 2, the last pick of the game. Oh my goodness. We knew it was a good era. We've seen it sort of being favored in, in game after game. EG getting it in as their fifth pick, and Samael just playing it absolutely perfectly. He's got the Echo Saber. He's level 13 on this tiny. 15 minutes in. How do they put a stop to this? How do they stop him getting away with these plays? He's just moving around, finding the perfect blink pick offs every single fight. They can't hold him back. They need to They need to get Seb the Blink Dagger ASAP so that he can set up behind people. If, if Sumail does look for those aggressive plays that we've seen him do non-stop, they need the Blink on the Centaur to go for those counter ganks. It's starting to become a, a huge problem as Sumail is double the net worth of Topson. Oh. We'll see it again here, this play in the, the middle lane. Topson was actually using the bottle on Jerax while he was being chased there to save himself. That's what gave him that extra region as the impetus comes through. But yeah, Sumail with this deep ward. OG knows it's there, but they're able to go for that dive, and Sumail just constantly playing on the outskirts. As you see, he's going to wait for his cooldowns to come up, waiting for the avalanche toss combo to come, and then he commits forward. We've got to go back live, because we're going to see him potentially do it again here. This time, RTZ wants to come across and join in a bit of the fun. As RTZ crits Sumail, hunting up top. Thunder goes round for the giveaway, the position. Anna, can he get out there? He can't really TP. The avalanche is going to come out for Sumail. Just do it. the trees. Oh, crit. He doesn't do the wave of terror on target. So they don't have the vision. The TP is going to be successful for Mana. Wave Justin. of Terra in the wrong direction, unfortunately. Just in that one little spot that he could. Hiding away from them. And now they do have the Blink Dagger on. Sebastian. Crucial for them to be able to set up these aggressive plays, too. Now they can look to even set up some relocates. They're going to I mean, try really for Rush. The most ideal ways to do it. They've got S4 able to tank it up with the Untouchable. Not necessarily going to be the quickest, but it's a pretty safe one to take. Yeah, Untouchable plus Fire Spirits. Yeah. That Rush is... Look at this backswing. It's pretty slow, eh? Yeah. I know. Oh, 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 He's in! The full man who's so kind of doing the balls coming out for Jerex. S4 crit. They're getting low. They've lost two EG S4. Trying to run away, but he can't escape. The five man's going to come out straight away here from crit. Samael, RTZ still alive for now. Anna getting tossed up, tossed back. Samael, he's going to stay alive for Seb. Back in with a Huso. Samael managed to pick up an ultra kill before he went down. 
But all that sped up incredibly fast there around Ooh. the pit. I believe what we had eight people going down. We saw Crip buy back. Look at the damage. OG will take that trade though, as you can see the numbers favoring them. They were all so stacked up on the spot oh, side of I mean, everybody. Seb That's, getting in like that. I think it was a it was a foot. It was a four man hoofstop. It was a four man hoofstop. It was a four man hoofstop. And then even the spirits following up too. No tails like whatever. I'm gonna walk in. Watch Jarex hits multiple spirits on everybody. Thompson walks in. All that damage coming out. But look, everyone's so low. Watch the mail being so high level. He's got so, so much far. HP with this Echo Saber at this stage of the game. He doesn't get bursted down straight away, and he's able to get as much done as he can before he ends up going down. Even with that double Woo! hit, the Echo Saber. Yeah, look at that. He's feeling himself. Nice little punch back though, Seb, like we were talking about, how important that Blink Dagger reveal is going to be. As EG there, still focusing around that Roche Pit, really wanting to get it. Arteezy still very under front for his team, just a phase drum. Can't leave this rush, it's a half health, and Samael! Thompson's just dead! He just finds the Zeus, Seb's in with the two-man who's up, they've got the Supernova at the sideline as well here. Can they take it down in time? No, OG's got to back away from the Supernova, Seb trying to TP out, will be able to escape, but OG lose two. Samael again, double kill, 16-1-2, and Chris, He's gone magic missile, he's able to find Anna, Anna was trying to heal some mud as and Samael comes in for the triple kill! 17-1-2, 17-1-2! 19 of the 21 kills. Oh. Oh, give him another one, Samael! Another ultra kill, back to back ultra kills for Samael. And that rush is easily going their way this time. No chance of OG getting over to the pit. Give and that man an Aegis, he's got it. And now he's got a Shadow Blade and can go for that Silver Edge if he wants to, to go for the kills onto the Vector over and over again during the side pushes. This, this Sumail, this game. Oh no. He's gonna find Seb, no, he's Seb's just out. Yeah, he's still got the 1500 HP. He's, sure. he's the one that can survive that still. But the rest of his team, definitely not. As Topson, 3, 9, and 7 on the Zeus. How's, how's Ana doing? We got the Yasha, the Manta recipe. Getting closer and closer toward that ulti orb. That'll help a bit. Arteezy's still extremely under for the team. Sumail on the prowl. Found out here by the bolt, Seb. And with the who's on, they do have the control. They pop the horn as well. Sumail turns, punching it to Seb. Seb pops the stampede to get himself away. Sumail being surrounded, but he has that Aegis. He's going to get popped once. Ready to come back for round two. They have lost fly, EG. But S4, crit. They're there as well. Sumail in with the combo. Finds himself no tail. OG, they just have to get themselves the hell out of here. They cannot stand anywhere here near Sumail. That was everything there used by OG, right? Fiend's Grip, Stampede, Zeus, Spectral, yeah, everything committed there forward. Take out that Aegis of Sumail. Which gives RTZ some space to farm, so he's thankful for that, but still, he's still pretty far down there, but catching back up to Ana's farm as that gyrocopter is. The Sumail show continue looking for another kill. Ana, crit. He's found him. Here's Samael, that nightmare for OG. Level 18, max level grow. That much more damage coming through with the combo. I feel here at the main stage, we really are seeing out of all the tiny game, the best tiny performers of this TI so far. He almost has a kill per minute. 20 kills at the 21 minute mark. Except, we'll TP away. It's a male. He's hunting. Always oh, terrifying. No tail. Ooh. He'll be okay. Sumail going for a little bit of a safer item choice here rather than committing forward for a silver edge. Actually, we'll go for a BKB because, I mean, the amount of streaks that he's going to give. If he dies, he's oh, going to yes. be giving well over a thousand gold to anybody who kills he him. He is a walking piggy bank. Yeah. Yes. The last time I think it was like 1390 or something or 1400 when he died, so. Just want to be a little careful. We could see the build still deviate. It's definitely the safest choice you could go for versus This is the majority of their damage still. Not easy, no, he's along for the ride this game, really. Yeah, he's, you know, zero, one, and six. Zero, one, and six. Just just rolling along. Sean. But now, oh, he's not. Oh, oh crit. crit. Does so go for the save, but they've got the Fiend's Crip out onto Arteezy. There's the back of Emoji. They find Arteezy. They find Crit. Artis is cool. Artis is just chilling this game. He's just getting some creeps and pushing some lanes. 
It's all on Samael at the moment. He's the one that they've got to be worried about. He's level 18, 21 and 2. I mean, S4 too. S4's got an Aghanim's finished up. All right, Samael wants to add another one to his tally. There we have it. Yeah, he switched. He went for the Silver Edge. Yep. So he wants to look to just kill the Spectre in the combo. He can kill him right through that now with, once the Dispersion's gone. Should be able to finish this tier two tower off, and uh, indeed they do more money to Bank of Samel. He's yeah, as you say, well, got the money for the Silver Edge. Continuing to stay double net worth over Topson. Close to a BKB, so he's he's almost got an item for himself, so he can actually get involved. Once he's got that, he can actually join his team and in looking to get into those fights because right now he's still way too weak versus the Zeus burst damage. Second lowest level in the game. Oh, it's easy. But that's all right. He's got Samael on his team. Samael's having a pretty good game. It is pretty remarkable that the Gyro's level 12 and, yeah, that Tiny's level 19. That's something you don't see every day. Here we go. Samael. They do have that uh, ground ward there, OG. Playing a little bit more careful, staying near each other so they that they can't to. just constantly get picked off by this Tiny. G. Leap orb was heaven. Cover of smoke. They know the two heroes are showing mid. They want to make an aggressive play down here, but now EG, they're starting to collapse. They the Chantress and Gyron moving in. S4 and RTZ coming in from the side. Stamp people will be po trying to get No Tail out of there. The uphill miss will proc, so No Tail is able to get himself back a decent amount. The swap can come in though. Oh, crit finds the vision. Swaps him back. That's it. From Seb is not going to save his teammate. That's No Tail down. 30 seconds. Sumail instantly TP's top. He saw Anna, Anna for a second up there. Wants to go for a kill, but Anna. They've got eyes on Jarek Shacks. Put the tether up to the high ground. Anna's actually hiding in the tree lines, and his TP's on cooldown. Sumail is hunting. Uh oh. He wants him. Don't he find breathe. Him, oh, he's gone the wrong way. Oh no. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. No, doesn't see him yet. Ooh. No, he did. Oh. He caught a glimpse. It looked like he did. Anna should be fine. I say fine, as you say, still without the TP for 30 seconds. He's got to stay hiding for a bit. He does have the haunt available if they can look for a, a fight somewhere, but with the position that they have right now, they can. Seb pushes down that bottom lane. So we do see RTZ finishes up that BKB, and now a crucial timing for OG. They've got the Aghanims on Topson. They've got that much more damage they can look to push out. Come in these big horn places, you see these sort of yeah, global pickoffs there. It's going to be the ult from Topson. Giving some vision, giving some info for the team. As we saw, you know. He's still stuck up in that tree line, Anna. He waits for the TP. Smile there from No Tail as he gets the friendly tip from Seb's teammate. Does go down. It's better him dying than someone else in those. As Anna still hiding in the tree line up top. Able to farm at least a bit of the wave with that Manta illusion. Getting slowed down quite heavily as Sumail goes back on the prowl. He knows that the Spectre's up oh, here. Oh, he does. Anna's been hiding here a long time. Oh, oh. He's found him. Sumail's found him. Has he got the damage to take him? Stamp, he's going to be popped. Anna gets himself into the tree. Sumail jumps forward, but he doesn't quite get on top of him. Anna's able to get away with a TP. Ooh. Close. 12k lead for Ignis is 26 minutes in. 26 to 15. Experience is a little bit closer to only 5,000. Oh, gee. He's still not out of this one. They need this game to just keep going longer and longer for their Spectre to get online. They've got, the, they've got the double experience gain talents too. So if they do get a successful fight since they are at this disadvantage, you could see their levels just skyrocket. That 25% on both the Zeus as well as the IO. Bottom. We have Ward on the high ground. They saw Ana as well as No Tail go down here. No Tail goes for the Fiend script. They actually have the damage to find this killer. It doesn't look Th like his fly is going to be fine. No Tail does go for the Nightmare onto Smell, but it's quickly taken off by Fly. Smell's just straight in. Picks up the kill on No Tail. They didn't have the Nimbus up to try to go for some type of play there, but yeah. No Tail just tanks the gank to make sure that Ana can at least farm and push out that bottom wave. We'll probably see Sumail go, go and chase Ana for the next few moments. Stop. Artizi. He's got eyes on Seb. 
Wants to get in on the fun. S4 closing over two. So is Crit. They're ready to try and make a go on his set. Pops the Stampede. Gets himself all the way back up to the high ground. Jarex is there as well with the tether, so Sep will be fine. Back towards down bottom, Samael was on the hunt once again for Anna. Anna hiding in the trees after using that Spectral Dagger does have a TP. Doesn't want to use Gets. it too early at the threat of the Avalanche. Scan is successful. Samael knows where he is, throws out the tree throw to get the connection, to find the vision, has the hit with the Silver Edge. Has he got the final bit of damage? He hasn't. Anna, once again, the Spectral Dagger back up. And this time with the TP, knowing that the Avalanche has been used, could go safely for the escape. He's Gets not out. letting Anna really farm though in those sides. Like, Anna wants to be able to farm on the split push, and Sumail just constantly hunting him is not letting him get the defusal or any type of items that he needs. Really smart plays by Sumail, recognizing that he's already hit. He's already pretty much hit critical mass, right? He's like, all right, let's uh, let's allow S4 to run around the map and farm our TZ to catch back up. I just really need to hunt the Spectre all game, not let him get those timings and approach that late game mass. Bit of a change up in uh, the IO talents this game, I guess because of the, the lineup around him. Doesn't take the, uh, the tether ground uh, scepter bonus this game. So towards mid, crit, just going in. Onto Thompson, Thompson, it's not going to be kept alive by Jarex there as S4 with the impetus, finding the damage to, to pick off the Zeus as Thompson again. He's going to have to sit the sidelines for 50 seconds. EG, they're coming straight down the middle lane and onto he the D3 to, tower. Yeah, he needs to buy back. He's their only D push for the lineup. And Samael at the moment with the Crystalis on top of the Silver Edge. Anyone he gets on top of, even the Sentinel now at this stage, could be in, in potential danger of going they've, down to the burst. They've got Aghanims now on the Centaur though, so they can't actually defend people with that damage mitigation that comes out from it, that 40%. Thompson has to be so careful now though. If he does die, you could just see that base push come out. It's like we are mentioning, he is their, pretty much all their deep push. Oh no, Thompson. He's gotta be careful. We absolutely have some mail. We'll be ready to jump as soon as Thompson stands close enough. But he backs away. Thunder God's Wrath, they've got the information. OG know what's up. The EG's up there on the high ground. Roshan is back up. Yeah, EG can go for this. They've had, they have, they've had the Vlads for a bit on crit too. They have more than enough damage and they can actually get the sustain with S4 tanking easily to bring this down. Don't think OG can come in forward for this one. They don't have their Zeus ulti available. They need every little amount of damage. They will scout it, but it's already dead, and that's an Aegis cheese going the way of EG. No way that OG can get in here. And they're looking to fight an immediate smoke out of the pit. They've got that one ward vision on the high ground, on that right side, giving them information of where OG is. They're gonna head their way right over there. Arteezy is very far from this, though. He's all the way up top. Samael, seeing Seb on the front. Samael wants to try and find the squishies on the back, and he's straight in with the combo. Looks towards No Tail. No Tail's gonna get taken down by the Impetus. They pop down the Nimbus. Thompson trying to fight back for the side. He's able to zap down S4 there. Get the kill onto the Enchantress. Crit now being looked towards as well with a horde from Mana chasing down the Spectral's rear. They're finding another Samael very low at the moment. That pipe keeping him alive, but Seb in with a finish. Able to take the Aegis out of his hand. Seb getting the kill once. Arteezy with the BKB looking towards Seb. Samael with that second life jumps back in on top of Seb. Gets revenge. Ooh, that almost looked, that looked starting to look scary a bit there for EG as the Centaur Agony comes out, Sumail jumps forward, the combo doesn't do as much damage as he initially expects it to. They're able to take a pretty decent fight, they have to use pretty much every ulti there, but... They're able to slow down. Certainly one of the better fights this game for OG, but obviously considering how the game's going overall, still not... doesn't really say much. As EG still leading by quite a mile, 14k advantage, 30 to 17. And there's the man of the moment, Samael. 86% kill participation this game. 32k hero damage done already at 31 minutes. But Absolutely Anna is, incredible. Ana is starting to get that farm. You saw in that hunt what the Manta, what the Diffusal can do when you have all these illusions inside of the team fights. Even if you're an Enchantress, you die very quickly. As we see, S4 is going to be going for a BKB to protect himself from all this damage that comes out from that Zeus, from the Spectre. Once those double ulties come out, Ana is... Approaching a heart, he will be able to deal a lot of dispersion damage back to the side of EG. Artizi almost has an Agnims. He's now surpassed the Centaur in the game and has climbed into that top four net support spot. Oh. I mean, Dota Plus, it really does love, love Spectre. Spectre. It, it does. absolutely loves Spectre. Zep gets the Stampede off, so that damage reduction. Oh, oh that crit! Hit from Fail. 1,362 in one swipe there with the tree. When you're next to a Vengeful Spirit with Vlads, you know, that, that little bit 
bigger damage coming out for the Tiny. Really adds up. S4. Ana has oh. a DD. And the Manta. Oh yeah, S4 doesn't stand too much of a chance here. Too much damage there. SML, he is on the he's on the rack, Smith. Seb's dead for 40 seconds. There's no glyph either. Oh, she's got to do something about this. Otherwise, they're losing they're losing this mid rack. The male just punching it down. Oh, actually blinks back, looks for the kill, finds no tail outside of the base, finds the bane. Back up to the high ground they go. Buyback's coming out. They didn't quite manage to take down the melee racks though, Ichi. So OG. Are able to keep those mid racks alive for now. Obviously, EG still in good position to get straight back in there. They know the Nimbus was used, so they know that's down for a bit. It's Centaur's still down as well. Samal, ready to jump if he sees an opportunity. The Centaur's respawning, and they know Stampede's up too. It's a bit of a risk here. EG should be back off without their Enchantress. It was a fortunate defense there from OG. They don't lose racks yet. Yeah, keep I, those I, racks alive. I actually like how Topson was playing that too. Is you could see he wanted to walk up to try to nuke the wave, but he's like, if I get tossed back, we lose all of our key push. He actually had to stay all the way back and let them deal this damage on the racks. Maybe a bit of a, a greed for the kill there, getting the better of uh, Samel. As he, he could have had that last hit onto the melee racks, but he decided to blink back and go for the kill on the Bane instead. We'll see if EG nonetheless are able to get those racks taken down. Sooner than later, they do keep themselves over this half of the map. The scan comes out from OG. They know that EG's up there on the high ground. They'll see the see the courier as well passing across. Can OG fight this though? Arts easy with the high ground, pops the BKB. Stampede's gonna be popped out, giving a bit of damage reduction for the side of OG, but no tail. Is it really enough to keep him alive? Does it look like it is? Fly comes out with the sun, they lose no tail. They jump forward and find Seb as well. S4 with the impetus is too much damage. Now OG, they're down no tail, they're down Seb without buyback. Seb down for a full minute. And they use the haunt in that fight. They're probably the most important tool for them to take any any real type of team fight versus EG. And now Thompson. Can he really take push it? He's actually, he's taken down bottom. They're going for a bit of split push here. They've lost the mid racks. So obviously, the damage from Samael, it, it's going to cut through these racks. They can't really afford to try and go for any sort of a base race. They're coming back in towards the base, but there's not going to be much of it left as EG. They take the full set middle, and they take the full set top. Crits looking for a play too, looking for the swap. Swap. Anna. Manta tries to dodge it off, just managed to back off. Oh, TZ actually gets tossed in by Samael oh. there. Oh! Uh-oh! Oops. Samael said, do you have to get in the way, Artur? As now put a little bit of a stop to it. Obviously, EG's still in a very comfortable position after taking those two sets of racks. Yeah, I mean, they all just got so much gold. Now Sumail finally has that BKB that he thought he'd be going for earlier, but, you know, no Sumail went for all that super aggressive item style instead. Now he's got a lot more liberty in the fights to run around for that 10 seconds, not having to worry so much about all that, all that damage and static field that really starts to add up. But OG, pushing back onto the tier one mid. They're finally gonna get this next tier one. They only took out those bottom towers throughout this game. They've had very limited map control versus EG's aggressive style. There's a full heart on Ana. You never, you never know. Maybe Dota Plus was right. Maybe the power of the Spectre is strong enough. If OG can keep this game going somehow, and Ana can sort of get that next time after the heart, maybe we can start things, see things switch around. Oh, look at RTZ. There we have it. Tossed in, and the rest of EG, they're out of there. They don't even look at him. Walking their way out of the base. And there, <laughs> there, we, there we have it. He knows. he knows. He knows this is one of those games, RTZ. It's one of those you laugh at, but on the inside, you're just like, oh, God. I mean, he, he's laughing because he looks at Samael, and he's Samael's 24, 1, and 5. He knows this one's it's pretty comfortable. He's feeling pretty good about the team, and, and understandably so. They have this strong lead of EG. Bottom lane, TZ. The wraparound coming in from Notel. He's trying to clean up the creep wave quickly. The stampede comes forward. There's the Fiend's grip. There's the jump forward. And he's gone. Didn't have a smile on his face this time round, as now OG could actually look to threaten the base a little bit. They're straight in. Onto that bottom tier three. The fortification comes out. There's Notel. Does actually find the nightmare onto fly. He's playing around with the two of them. That is going to give space for the rest of OG to push Wait, on this bottom easy. lane. They don't have TPs. They don't? It's Crit and Fly who are being bothered by Noto right sure now. I'm sure they killed the pain, but down on the bottom lane, look at the base. Sumail just got his TP delivered on the Courier, but that Rex, it's going down. S4 makes his way down here. And Ana. But they get the melee Rex. And he's out with the TP. The Wave of Terror, though, is easy. They're going to for the TP. He's still very tanky with the heart. Can he walk himself away? He's got the back up at Thompson too, so Anna, on the retreat, he will still get out. So OG actually able to strike back a little bit against all odds and get a melee rax from Evil Geniuses. Very heads up play there. 
identifying that there's no TP on Sumail's tiny or S4. That lead does trickle down a bit. It was 20,000 for EG, now only 16. The experience, the experience been sitting about the same the entire game. All about the Spectre. Yep. Going for that butterfly next so we can get a little bit more damage. Two for his team. Look at this still. It loves the Spectre. It really does. DD Rune spawns top. Look, they're looking for Ana. Thunder Cross Raph's gonna get in the vision. He knows that they're coming, but maybe it's a bit too late. He's got a homing missile upon him. Stampy's gonna be used. They look for the jump, but they're able to burst down. Fly, Fly's gone out of the fight. Seb, look at what's S4. S4 pops the BKB. OG now backing up. Seb on the front lines, tanking it all, but the damage from Samael will be enough. Big Crick comes in with a tree throw as Samael gets himself the double kill. Finding Seb. It's Jerax, Thompson, and Anna back up to the base, back up to the high ground. Roshan not quite spawning yet. That the DDR TD Martizi does right now. BKB's on cooldown on. It's gonna walk into him here. The Manta dodge. Buyback's gonna come out from Seb. They feel like they can maybe try and take this fight, but Samali's in with the combo. The damage is too much. Oh Anna just getting God. critted down. They've lost Jerax. Anna trying to run himself away from the burns too much. Seb jumps in. The buyback, the hawk from Anna. He's, he comes into play. Can he turn this one around? Seb falling low. Taken down with the homie whistle. They'll get Arteezy. Can they get anything more? They're able to oh, fight Tiny. More. They're able to fight Fly. The buyback horn from Anna. Absolutely doing it. The buyback's there from OG. No hesitation is now Arteezy. He buys back. There's four dead on EG. Three of them don't have buyback. They're going to have to clean up this range racks, but thankful for EG for Can them they that they have the those. They can't. The tier twos are still up. They still have all their outer towers still alive. But they claim something. With that quick relocate, with that heads up play, they chunk that network it's advantage down. What a buyback from Ana. Absolutely. Those buybacks, not only from Ana, but Seb, Jarex as well, just getting back straight into that fight, realizing they can take the fight. As we saw before that, that first little skirmish in mid, EG used pretty much all of their BKPs. They didn't have them ready for that fight there. Mm -hmm. So OG could take the fight. They've, as we saw, they clean up that bottom lane of Rex. They're into the Roshan pit. And that lead, it's starting to diminish. And this is... This is the Refresher Shard. They have a Zeus as well as a Spectre oh. with the Refresher Shard. That is where you hit that critical mass. Oh my goodness. We saw EG in Game 2 make quite a comeback. Could OG make even a bigger comeback here in Game 3? What a series we have. As we hit this 40 minute mark, we've got the double runes now spawning. Arteezy still just not farmed enough to really be that car carry for his team. They need the success to be coming from Sumail and S4, but Ana, 11, 6, and 11. Has another 5,000 gold, can go for that Scotty if he wants to, and he does. 4,500 oh. HP on the Spectre. And nearly level 25. Looking a bit scary here for EG in these I, next I, few moments. I do want to see what that Dota plus boom rate's at like now. After sort of an exchange like that, we saw what it was at before. It's only going to be sliding more and more in favor of OG with these sort of plays. Just a 4k advantage for EG. It's slipping away so fast. They still have the momentum coming in from those two lanes that they've taken the Raxes out. But bottom lane constantly going to be pushing in because OG got Look theirs as well. Look at it now. 74% for OG. My goodness. Arteezy does not deal damage in these fights at all. He only, he's hitting very weak. Even next to the bench, he only is hitting for about 220. 240 with the Vlad's aura too. But still, not enough to go through this Spectre. And not enough to go through that, that Aghanim Stampede that we've been seeing so much from Seb. You've got to wonder how things are now in the EG booth. Imagine it as Samael. You're, you're in this game as 28, 2 and 6, and suddenly, it looks like things are getting turned around against you. you are, you've got to keep yourself in a very strong mental state at the moment as Samel. As he has had such a fantastic game, but at this point, things are starting to come back against you. Deny the top tower. It's very scary for EG to make aggressive moves versus this age. They've got the haunt, they've even got the refresher shard as well on Thompson, and Thompson also is level 25, so that damage from the Zeus just amplifies that much more once you get that arc lightning talent. How many other level 25s are we getting soon? 
I almost actually has the 25 too. Probably gonna be the relocate kill. This game really does get so hard as it gets scaled up. Yeah. This Spectre, the combination of the Zeus as well as we will we'll see sort of high ground defense potential. Sure, they, they've lost that two set of racks, but OG as we see are, are just doing an excellent job of pushing these lanes out and, and playing it in a way that it, you can't really feel that they've lost those two racks. They're pushing out the lanes so well with the with the Spectre and with the Zeus. They've got the liberty to do so when they have this Aegis. They're not at risk of EG looking up for this. I mean, EG, look at them. They're all just trapped in their base. They're not even able to farm aggressively at all. While OG takes the whole map. And they've actually swapped who has that Refresher Shard. They've actually given it to Seb. That double stampede in the fights. Eight oh, yeah. seconds of 40% reduction. Yeah. That's pretty much the entire duration of EG's, the BKBs that they'll be having. Oh, no doubt about that at all. Seb, last few stampedes making all the difference. My goodness, if he hits 25, well, I imagine he takes with the, the aura. And with the Spectre. Have you, with that, with the Spectre, it's good luck killing the Spectre. Move stomp duration's also quite good, though. It is. <laughs> it's a four it second is. AOE stun. But with the Spectre <laughs> on your lineup, the aura can be just. He just doesn't die. Huh, oh, Jarex has started to queue up. A Satanic on the IO, so maybe it will be that attack ally tether target. You get Satanic off with a tether to the Spectre, you full heal that Spectre so quickly. And we've seen with the Dispersion you can too when you're sitting at a 40, you know, 4500 life on Ana. EG's has got to be so careful now of any sort of move they play. Uh, we, we saw earlier, saw the confidence of EG going around getting these solar pick offs. Now the game has entirely changed. Yeah, I mean, look at, looking at that gold graph, it went from 20k down to only 2k. One of the biggest swings I feel we've seen on the main stage this year. Mm -hmm. Not the biggest. That age is gonna be getting reclaimed in the next 30 seconds or so. Certainly tell that EG's, EG's, they've got a timer on that. They're waiting for that to go before they try anything too aggressive. Yep. They may even time it so they make the strike just as I, I think they're gonna look to make the fight simple right now. Yep. Zeus Ult does come out, scouts them up, all kind of grouped up. They're probably expecting EG to look for a smoke here. So OG, they're all gonna gather up on a high ground. The age is gone. EG, can they jump some mail? Hmm. Jarex actually used the relocate to just grab some bounties. Some mail's leading in. They do see tops in here. Tops and Nimbus straight out. The Horde as well. Everything being popped. They want to fight this. Crit tries to go for the swap, but Crit gets taken down straight away. They'll go for the supernova on the high ground. S4 and some mail looking towards Thompson. Have they got the damage to bring him down? The Axe Stampede coming through. Not enough to save Thompson. Thompson's dead. Buys back. Immediately back Ar in the fight, Anna. Artizis is being chased by Anna. He's he still can't run away. Artizis can't get himself out of this. He's dead for 100 seconds. Anna's S4, still TP's still back to base. Blind Samael, will they get out? No, so does he find him? Does he find him? He does. He Samael gets back. Artizis dead though, without a buyback. Not available for about a minute and a half. As that double stampede, we see it coming into play. They don't have the damage to go through, really. They were able to eventually kill Topson, but the amount that they really have to commit for it to kill the Zeus through that 8 seconds of Stampede is too much for EG to deal with as this Spectre, seemingly immortal. This man's got a lot of money, but he has to play careful now. He's, he absolutely needs to make sure he has buybacks available. I mean, as I see. 29, 2 and 6, I get it, it, it isn't team deathmatch, it's not all about kills, you're seeing it that this game. Samael, he, he, he's played his heart out this match, but now it's at a point where OG, they're starting to win it. I'd say they definitely are winning, the, even though they have those two racks yeah. down. Ichi's team fight into them, they can't actually really do too much. There's just way too much tankability on everybody. I mean, it's a 4,000 health centaur, a 3,000 health, well, 2,600 health Zeus. Even the IO has 2,900. It's pretty much his yeah. bane. You see um, no tail sitting at 1,300, but everybody else is close to that 3,000 range. Where that's where, I mean, Tiny, he wants people to be a bit lower. Sure, he still has that Daedalus so he can crit, but when all these heroes are at this high of HP, he loses a lot of his effectiveness. There's now an Aeon disc. is finished up. Tops in. But you can see, every single time the fight does come out, that Stampede instantly, their Spectre Haunt comes out as well and just chaos ensues right away for EG. I mean, at this point now, it really feels like it sort of swings the other way, where it's sort of EG waiting for, for their cause to get the big item so they can scale. You know, Arteezy, 
he needs to, he needs so the, he needs the satanic and he needs a rapier at this stage. Yeah, exactly. But he needs to go for the rapier, but he's, 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 not able rapier. To find, he's not able to find the farm on the map. No. Because of a, a such slow start that he had at the beginning. You know, there was a point where we saw it. He was, he was smiling, he was laughing, he felt it was fine because of how well Samir was doing. Well, at this point, it sort of now comes back to him. And Artizi's not quite at the point that his team needs him to be at. Now it's EG that, that sort of need more time for their gyro to, to be able to get the items to deal with OG's cause. First time in 50 minutes pretty much has claimed the... See in the middle lane. OG, ready to pound. Stop. Zeb gets the stun, the double force though, creating the space for S4 to get back. They try for an avalanche, doesn't connect. Nimbus get thrown down on top of RTZ, RTZ the side trying to take the Nimbus. Thunder God's Wrath used by Thompson, they'll pop the horn. RTZ just have to pop the BKB run away, Crit gets surrounded, Crit gets taken down. They'll go for the Supernova, OG looking towards the sun, can they take it down in time? They can! They get the Supernova, Samael going in with the BKB, looking towards Zeb, brings down Zeb, but Anna, still alive, cuts down Samael, double kill for Anna. S4 trying to run himself away from Jax, his board for Jax, with the right clicks, gets the kill! Four dead on EG, Samael has to buy back! The rest of them do have buybacks available as well, but OG, they'll lose too, but they've got the big boys still alive. Anna and Thompson pushing on the tree throw, not enough to kill off Jarax. These two are still just full health, full mana. Thompson is pretty much full. There's another buyback from Crit, and there's another buyback from Seb. Ready to go in the mid lane. Samel getting stunned up by the Nimbus. Anna moving in. Samel getting forced back. They've got to keep it alive. Artiz, he dies! Buys back as well. Four buybacks, including Samel. It's a full team buyback here from EG. Seb's four. Jumped on. Seb with the double edge. S4 bursted down by the Nimbus. They lose S4. He's down Holy without crap. buyback. OG into the middle lane, onto the high ground, and taking a tier 3 tower. The fortification gets popped. EG, can they hold with just the four of them as OG, they found the tower. They can't get to the back lines, they can't go through Ana, they can't kill the Zeus, they can't kill this Io. As that is going to be another set of racks at the least for OG as they find the melee racks mid. Samael, couldn't he get any sort of jump in the homing missile connects onto Ana. Throw the tree out, but that is the full set of racks got mid. They're moving straight towards the top lane. OG ready to hunt for those megas. There's the swap. They get the swap on and they get the silver edge. Can they burst him in time? No, the axe stampede. The damage reduction, keeping Anna safe. The, the sunray sun potential damage doing a fair bit. Anna trying to walk his way out of the base. They've got the toss. They kill him. Got they it. get Anna down for two minutes. Jarek still alive with about two HP at the moment, able to tether himself up to the high ground. He'll live. But they do push OG back. They get that kill on Anna. A clutch swap play does cost Crit his life, but it keeps the game going. Only just about though for EG as they're now 12k behind. The majority of the damage in order to kill that Spectre is really going to start coming from Fly. That Sunray is pretty much their best effort to pierce through that 4500 health on Anna. Samael was out hunting, but a scan there from OG confirmed his position. Refresher finished on Seb. We've already seen what one stampede can do in the fights too. How do they really go through all this? EG. The next Roche is alive. We see the item items start to get replaced. Sumail has now picked up a butterfly replacing that Echo Saber, but oh. Artizi only has a small crit. And Jarex is queuing up a rapier. No, he switched it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to see if he was going to be able to get the Satanic and Rapier before Artizi did. I mean, Satanic that would have been the ultimate PM. The heal that he can get off yeah. is pretty awesome. As we see this replay coming through, the Sunray damage really coming through onto Ana. And then Sumail committing forward with those several tosses. Yeah. But as we say, if Crit didn't give his life there to make that swap play, this game pretty much will have been over in, in favor of OG. Yeah. See, they're still feeling confident. Anna. Absolutely. The momentum on a rise here for OG in this game three. No tail gets found out though. Swap from Crip. Has to buy back right away. They don't want to have to have Ana buy back. 20 seconds until Ana's back in. How many is he's gonna have that horn? They're looking for the Roche. They can get Roche before Ana. They've got 10 seconds to do it. They're facing a little bit of trouble. They have to come in for They've got it. This Roche Four is seconds. So important. Three, two, they've got to have it. They've got the Aegis on Arteezy. And it looks like OG don't want to fight straight away into it. 
They're popping the axe snapping, now that looks to jump, jump forward, and Sam does get punched straight away, post the refresh, he gets the second stampede off, they've got the control on RTZ, RTZ taken down once, they get the Aegis out of the Supernova, successful though from Fly, stunning up Anna, but do they have the damage to actually kill him, Samael, looking at what's Anna, but Anna pops the banter, they look to Samael, Samael, take it down, down for two minutes, RTZ trying to back off, there's going to be the buyback for Jerax, they get the Nimbus out onto Fly, Fly, jump top by Sam, the Who Stop takes him out, two dead on EG, the base of EG also, the creeps. They don't have buyback, Fly and Samael are dead. But two minutes pretty much, OG going straight down the middle lane. As only S4, Arteezy and Krit are left standing. And they're coming at Jerax as well, coming he, forward. He's got a rapier, but it's almost certainly They're going late. for the base. OG looking to close things up. They're onto the Ancient, they're beating it down at a pace that EG can't compare to. She is called OG. What? Against evil geniuses knocking EG down to the lower bracket, OG!